Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I am very excited for you guys to watch this lesson. We're going to be reviewing some beautiful, precise algorithmic order flow that we saw in this recent week of price action. Okay, so as you guys can see, we are on the Dow Jones daily chart and you guys probably are aware of this as you've been watching the market recently. The market was in a tight range across indices across the board, but we're going to focus on Dow Jones for this specific teaching because we had beautiful price action. So this goes for whatever time frame you're on, but specifically on the daily range, when we're consolidating like this, you want to be very, very patient and nimble with your entries, your profit taking, the amount of risk that you're putting into every trade because we know that it's hard to catch large moves, clean moves inside of this consolidation range. So regardless of time frame, again, we just want to wait for either side of the consolidation range to be ran and then see if there's a setup to target the opposing liquidity. So where I have this most recent candle on the right side of this consolidation zone, what do we have? We have relative equal highs and relative equal lows. So all we have to do is wait for one side of the consolidation range to be purged. And now we can see clearly that Dow ended up running the highs of its consolidation range, but what did it leave behind? Those relative equal lows. So of course we don't wanna call a top, but just framing our narrative with the price action that is to come, we know that buy side has been ran and relative equal lows have been left behind. Now continuing forward, we see that Dow created the swing high. And then what did it do? Return into this BISI, which sent us to run the highs once more. And continuing forward, we can see what occurred on the next daily candle. We close back below that BISI. So what does this BISI become? An inversion fair value gap. Now, it's easy to identify inversion fair value gaps just in terms of a price pattern. But why is this one significant? If you recall from earlier in the video, and you can still see here, the algorithm initially utilized this BISI to go run those highs. And then it rolled over and closed below, classifying it as an inversion. So if a BISI, in this case, since we were bullish before, if a BISI is initially utilized by the algorithm to either A, purge liquidity, or B, reach up to a premium key reference point, once we close back below it, that classifies this inversion as a high probability inversion to push price lower with any retracement back into it. Okay, so continuing forward, and as we always do, framing a narrative, internalizing order flow, we start to blend some of these concepts to really understand the likelihood of what the algorithm is going to do and where it is going to go. So recall, we still have not gotten our relative equal lows. We ran the consolidation relative equal highs. The BISI was utilized to send price higher to purge this swing high once more. We've closed below the inversion. It's a high probability inversion based on what we just discussed. And now you can see here, we've added a balanced price range. In terms of a signature that we look for, since we're looking for a move down to sell side, utilizing the inversion fair value gap, one of those signatures is that we don't wanna see price definitely not close above the inversion as a whole. But if we're trying to gauge weakness, heaviness in the market, we want to see strong rejection and or failure to reach consequent encroachment or 50% of the inversion fair value gap. So by extension of that, where is this balanced price range residing? Isn't it above 50% of this inversion? Yes. So we want to see that signature from the inversion in and of itself. But on top of that, we have this BPR above 50% of the inversion. So this is when you say, okay, it makes sense to expect price not to get up here because again, to reiterate, the inversion in and of itself, we don't wanna see price reach the high. The BPR in and of itself, we don't wanna see price reach the high. And then you combine these two PD arrays, the balanced price range and the inversion to kind of say, okay, I don't wanna see price reach up here. And before we move on, why is this the balanced price range? We have aggressive buy side delivery that purges a swing high, followed by aggressive sell side delivery that closes below that busy, classifying it as an inversion fair value gap. Now, moving forward, you can see that I've labeled this as a high probability inversion based off the things we've discussed, but I've changed the anchors of where I'm anchoring the low and the high of this inversion fair value gap. Why am I doing this? It's a little difficult to see here, 
But if you're looking on your own charts, again, this is Dow daily between the close of this candle here and the open of the next candle, there's a small volume imbalance or gap between those two candles. We have expansion and then we see what a closure and an opening, another volume imbalance, another gap right here. So whenever this volume imbalance is included in the fair value gap, three candle formation, I utilize the volume imbalance, the extreme high, if there's a volume imbalance on the high and or the extreme low, if there's a volume imbalance on the low of that three candle formation for the fair value gap to get my correct anchoring for key reference points. So 50%, 25%, 75%, etc. You can see here, 50%, this red line, 39759. That's of interest to us because of what we discussed in the previous slide, where we wanted to see rejection. If price did reach up to quantum encroachment, we want to see rejection from it. Okay. We don't want to see price reach up to the balance price range that I took off here just because I don't want to clutter the chart too much. And then again, we also have what? A high, a low, a higher high. So this down close candle is your bearish breaker. Just adding on to the fact that we don't want to see price go above consequent encroachment of the inversion fair value gap. And now we can see what beautifully occurred here on Dow Jones daily chart. So this red box that I've added here, it's just depicting more of a reason for price to go lower if we do have any retracements. So we have that SIBI that was created after we closed below the high probability inversion fair value gap. This candle last Thursday, we open, we go higher, but where do we go? Look at the high of this wick and then look at the right side there, 39759. We're wicking exactly to the tick 50% or consequent encroachment of the high probability inversion fair value gap. By extension, what are we failing to reach for? we're failing to reach for a balanced price range that's above CE of that high probability inversion. So after we reach this level and start to push away, and we're gonna look at this on the lower time frames, this is when you start to say, okay, this is extreme weakness to me, and it's really possible that we're gonna go down and get these relative equal lows, and that I should be hunting shorts for this session, as long as we continue to reject away from this level, consequent encroachment of the high probability daily inversion fair value gap. Okay guys, and now we are down on the charts and we're gonna look at how this beautiful order flow continued even down here on the one minute, okay? So this is last Thursday, April 4th. If you guys are following along or you wanna review it on your own, I encourage that you do, of course, um, with all my videos. But we can see here, I have 9.30 open labeled. New York open, that's Eastern Standard Time, of course. Price opens, we've ran these highs and we expand into what? This red line, that's consequent encroachment of the daily inversion fair value gap. So as I hover over the 930 candle, look at the top of the screen where it says the open high low close for the current candle. You can see the high there is 39759. On the right side, consequent encroachment of that inversion fair value gap from the daily that we have been discussing this whole video is that exact level. So we're seeing a 930 open Judah swing, manipulation phase, whatever you want to call it, and then rejection from a strong premium key reference point based on everything we've already discussed up to this point in that video. Now, framing an entry. If you recall from the last video discussing the 930 fair value gap strategy and just how we can trade and utilize that model upon New York Open, this is where it's significant and you should be confident in your setup playing out. So we have 9.30 open again, manipulation into a key reference point, and then displacement after that manipulation has taken place. So you go short here, and what do we want to target? The sell side liquidity, the equal lows that we have left. So see how they generated the sell side liquidity down here? Equal lows at 39566. And then they expanded it higher to trap any longs, reach for a premium key reference point before actually going lower and actually making the high of today or this session. Now, adding higher time frame levels onto the one minute chart here, we've already discussed consequent encroachment of the inversion fair value gap. And then we have this displacement or SIBI that would be our short entry. This blue line, if you recall from earlier in the video, that's our daily bearish breaker. So see how we have a lower time frame PD array nested in a higher time frame PD array after the manipulation phase has occurred during the opening range. Okay, see how all these things are coming together to lead us to believe that this is a high probability setup? Then what do we do? We reject there and we get back below this large red box here, guys. That's the daily SIBI. 
right? So we're coming back below that daily fair value gap and gravitating towards these relative equal lows here, okay? Now, this is not needed to be a successful trader, to find your model, whatever, but this is a signature that I utilize on top of everything we discussed here, right? If I'm trying to find a potential turning point or smart money reversal, what have you guys heard ICT say before? Whether you agree with it or not, let's assume what I'm about to say and what he says is true. The high and low of the day is created before price and the candles even print, okay? And I'm gonna kind of discuss why I believe that is true and how I utilize it to my advantage in my trading and spotting smart money reversals. So if it's true that the high and low of the day is formed before the session is even live, this is the turning point we're looking at, right? These highs here rejecting off consequent encroachment of that daily inversion fair value gap. By extension of that logic that it's already predetermined, if I take the low of this range, okay, so these are relatively equal, the low where I have sell side liquidity labeled to the high where we rejected, okay, and I'm going to change this color here, okay, this bright yellow line. See how we tapped right here at 854, look at the top of the screen, the low of this candle is 39.663. Look on the right side there. Equilibrium, or 50% of that range, is 39.663. But see how the algorithm worked this level to the tick exactly before that high was even made to go into the daily inversion consequent encroachment, right? So if this is true and I'm trying to spot a turning point, a smart money reversal, I'll run the range that has already taken place up to what I think is that reversal. And then I'll see just for added confluence, was the algorithm working equilibrium before the range was even made? And that just gives me added confluence to say, okay, this would make sense. They utilize equilibrium of the range before that high was even made. Now I want to see us keep this high intact and then smash through equilibrium of that range and gravitate down towards what would be our sell side liquidity. And now just to wrap it up here, I'm going to make a lesson on significant fair value gaps. This is one of them. Okay. This white rectangle I just drew. Why is that a significant fair value gap? Well, because one, the algorithm already utilized it, like we just discussed beautifully off the 50% of that range before it even played out. But two, it's an equilibrium fair value gap. That in and of itself is classified as significant. Okay. So how do we use this for this setup? A couple ways in terms of targeting, you can take a partial here. Okay. You can move your stop loss or cut your risk in half. Okay. Things of that nature. In terms of reading order flow and trying to understand if you're on side, what do you want to see the algorithm do? Do you want to see the algorithm come down here, purge that low, and then hold it on a closing basis? No. You want to see us close below it. But what signature do we get on the bottom of that? That's a bearish immediate rebalance. And then we expand lower towards the sell side liquidity. We actually don't get this till later in the day, but you would have got it if you held throughout the day. And I'm going to continue discussing this. But just study what occurred here and kind of the step-by-step -step process that we're we're going through here. Recall that this red rectangle right here, that's that daily SIBI that we're looking at. So if this is our, what we want to be the high of the day, at least until this sell side liquidity is purged, we don't want to see this get taken. Okay. Yes, we had a little coloring outside the box here in the one minute, but all we were doing was reaching for a deeper premium, consequent encroachment of that daily inversion. Once we get back below this daily SIBI, there's no real reason for price to get back above it. Okay, because the objective has already been completed and we still haven't done what? We still haven't purged the sell side liquidity. We generated more sell side liquidity here. Okay, so that in and of itself, any longs, okay, I, I'm just looking at it as inducement and a retracement into a premium to offer smart money a better entry short. Okay, and then we can see throughout the day, what is the algorithm doing? Coming back and just working into this daily SIBI. Is it going above it? No. Is it even reaching the high after we reclaim below it? No, it's not. Okay. And then of course you can see we expand lower and get this sell side liquidity that we were looking at in the start of this example. And then we fall off a cliff. And like we already mentioned on the daily chart, we got those daily lows as well. So if this is a little overwhelming, um, one, you don't need all these signatures, all these concepts to have a successful trade. Okay. 
But this is how you want to review these charts. You want to understand, okay, what is the algorithm referring to? Why shouldn't I take setups? Why should I take setups? For example, this daily bears breaker nested with this one minute SIBI, okay, rejection off the premium key reference point, everything we've talked about in this video. But see how we work down from the daily chart to a one minute chart and can frame an entry utilizing those higher time frame levels. Okay, everyone, that will wrap up this teaching. As you can see here, we have our private Discord community where we do daily signals, what I'm buying, what I'm selling, when I'm buying, when I'm selling. We just opened that portion of the community up with me and my long-term friend and phenomenal trader, Real Trader Paul. We also do pre-market analysis before each session. We'll do daily reviews and or trade reviews of any trades that I take. And it's just more of a personalized learning, personalized community where you can ask more specific questions. Um, there's a section, a ticketing section inside of the community called Talk to Tim, where you can send me your winning trades and your losing trades. You can talk to me and say, okay, the setup was great, but I didn't do a good job holding till target, or maybe I risked too much, or why was this a loss? Things of that nature. So it's a more personalized learning experience, okay? The link to join this community will be in the description, but we do also have the free portion of the community as well, and we have plenty, plenty, plenty of value and more things to learn on there that are not on the YouTube channel. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll get back to you later.